Dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure for me to share some of my thoughts on gender equality in higher education and research with you in this very important meeting. I would like to start with a quotation from European Parliament Resolution of 9th September 2015 on women's career in science and universities. Here is the quotation. Whereas statistics consistently show that girls become disengaged from STEM subjects at school and are less likely to pursue a science-related degree at university, whereas there is no one single explanation for the low levels of women in STEM and reasons include lack of knowledge about STEM careers on the part of teachers in school, lack of female role models, a high number of precarious short-term contracts, unconscious bias on interviews panels, women being less likely than men to put themselves forward for senior positions, and the last one is a tendency for women to be steered into teaching and pastoral roles rather than research and academia. Dear colleagues, there are three dimensions to the challenges of gender equality in higher education and research, each requiring a type of change. The first one is cultural change. The second one is structural change. The third one is individual change. Removal of the barriers may not be successful to increase the female participation at decision-making levels as long as reluctance, mostly due to learned helplessness, stays unsolved. We need to promote individual change by the empowerment and encouragement of women. It's obvious that we need change. Change can be defined as doing something newly or differently. By itself, change is neither inherently good nor bad. Any change will make people different from what they were before. Unfortunately, not every change process leads to the expected results. There are multiple reasons for potential failure. The first one is unexpected changes in the external conditions. Second one is a lack of commitment in the implementations. The third one is resistance of people. And the last one is lack of resources. Let me give you some short definitions of resistance. Resistance is viewed as being a natural and inevitable part of the change process and as something that exists within individual. Resistance occurs because it threatens the statu quo or increases the fear of an anxiety about real or imagined consequences. People can resist change because they don't want have confidence it will work or they don't believe the resources are available to implement the changes successfully. It's obvious that male academics may feel uncomfortable to come across a policy which is addressed towards women only. Consequently, a workplace with equal opportunities should be introduced as a major priority rather than specifically promoting gender equality. This approach could be a practical way of making a persuasive case where gender is included as one of the major priority areas together with other equality and diversity policies. The words opportunity and diversity have positive meaning connoting dynamism and entrepreneurship. Focusing on the idea of opportunities and running a gender-sensitive agenda under a project would initiate a certain rhetoric which would persuade individual that it is the benefit for all. Emphasizing the need of a women's empowerment or career advancement may not directly attract leaders. Within this regard, the need of a more equal, diverse, and inclusive workplace could be the main emphasis. Even using the word of gender could result with resistance coming from the key movers. 
Defining gender as one of the major priority areas in the organization definitely needs the support of the management and leadership team. One of the possible ways of convincing the leaders of the organization might to introduce gender equality as key action, key strategy to lead the decision makers to reveal and use talents, women and men, for the success of the entire institution. Dear colleagues, as leaders and leadership teams play important role in all change processes, we decided to establish European Women Rectors Association. Evora is a full-fledged international non-profit association established in Brussels under the Belgian law in December in 2015 to promote the role of women in leadership positions in the academic sector, to advocate gender equality in higher education and research at European and international scales. As a conclusion, informing all stakeholders about the gender disaggregated data for creating awareness, convincing leadership to give priority to achieving gender balance and to take the actions for making the necessary changes could be listed as some of the essential steps developing gender equality as one of the major priority areas in the institution. Let's make it happen. Dear colleagues, Evora invites you to discover her story and create opportunities for new ones in STEM. I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity and I wish you a very successful meeting.